This episode of the Diamond Studios podcast is brought to you by Living Room Roasters. Living Room Roasters are local coffee roasters serving quality coffee beans to the community of Toccoa, Georgia. Visit them physically on Main Street in downtown Toccoa or at georgiacoffeeroasters.com. Be sure you enter the code Diamond Studios at the checkout for 10% off your total order. What's up? Welcome to the Diamond Studios podcast. This is where three friends and the occasional guests get together to talk about music, business, and the balance of both with life. I'm your host, Nathan Collins, joined by Kevin Beggs and Jonathan Boucher. Today, we're excited to dissect our season four. Let's get into it. All right. Guys, welcome. This is season four. Woo! This is season four. Season four. Super pumped. Um, so if you've been with us, uh, you know we have our normal normal ways of doing things, right? Um, we're switching it up. We are doing things completely different and um, hopefully more professional, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I think we got it. I think we got it. Okay. So uh, our main points, just to give you guys a little bullet point on what we're going to talk about. First is uh, we're going to talk about the music the importance of it in our lives. Um, we're going to talk about the business and the necessity of the business, sometimes the um, evil necessary, um, and then the balance and the absolute need for balance of both um, in our lives. So this is going to be good. I'm excited. Yeah. This is a new feel. <laughs> this is a new feel. We've been in a habit. Of doing it one way. We're climbing out of the rut. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was a rut? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, so we're going to kind of have uh, basically like a free-form discussion about um, the importance of music to us. Um, and I guess really to kick it off, um, I'm not exactly sure what I would do without it. Um, <laughs> clearly... You know, um, no. So music has been really the uh, I want to say the compass, <laughs> but <laughs> you guys the always compass. pick on me. Uh, music has been the compass of um my life, uh, direction wise. Um, so without it, I honestly don't know. I'm not sure how I would process thoughts and emotions. I'm not sure how I would process storytelling yeah it's almost like a events. guide it's almost yeah. like a guide yeah and it helps me process um different things throughout my life different events that happen yeah it's like a lot of times there's a lot running through my head personally and yeah. i feel like music almost zeroes in on like what i'm trying to process in yeah a sense. and getting a little candid um i'm working on a project now um that very like two people on the planet know that I'm working on. Well, I guess now a lot more. Um, but I'm working on a project now where the music is uh, really the translation of a stupid tough time. You know, like y if I release this music, it's not going to be, I don't know, it might be attractive to other people, but it's really just for me to say what I want to say and get it, get it out there. You know, it's not necessarily for the listener in this scenario. It's right. not necessarily for the listener. It's for me, be, you know? Yeah, it's for you, and maybe in a, a side product, it would eventually help someone or yeah. do some good for someone else Yeah, or give a different point of view that maybe another person isn't seeing. Yeah. yeah I know you do You do that a lot in your writing. <laughs> <laughs> they can't hear your head nod. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe they can. I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, the, the tough stuff that maybe, I don't know, I feel like this burden of like, if I tell people things, I don't know, I hate the feeling of, if it's like, I'm the cloud and they're a computer and I'm just like downloading all my burdens onto them. And now in my head, they're just going to have it in their storage interesting. forever. That's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. And so that's how I look at a lot of heavy things. And so I don't want to tell people, especially people close to me, because yeah. I don't want them to have the burdens. And um, so music is just like, it's a heavy way for me, but lighthearted to other people. Right. It's a good way to get it 
Get it out there. You're transferring your emotions in a zip file. Yeah. But not in a downloadable zip file. Yeah. It's a way for people to pay for my iCloud storage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they get access to my iCloud storage. Well, that's kind of clever. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. I love that. <laughs> Maybe I should write about that. You should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What a, I know you have more to say about this, I know. Yeah. Um, I know for me, a lot of the music element, like I know we've talked about before, you guys write definitely more in an emotional sense. Yes. Which I do too, but I also write lyrically. Like I think I definitely have started music with a writing. And complexity. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm I'm definitely more in diving into like necessarily wordplay because I'm not I'm not as good at wordplay as as, you, as I would say you guys are, but definitely like my storytelling and my um just my diving into what I want to talk about or what I want to speak on. Yeah. You know, but I definitely yeah. being challenged by you guys in your writing music first and then lyrics. I found that my music ends up being. <laughs> better because of it. there's more feeling in that when I write music first. I have yeah. seen that. And it's been a really cool process. Yeah. Watching that unfold and watching that happen. Yeah. Because I think personally it's helped me um uncover a lot of things that I haven't normally felt while writing music. And so I'm working on a project right now that is dealing with a lot of stuff that I have a hard time understanding and putting into songs. Yeah. And so it's a secret project. Now it's not, but I don't. I'm not gonna say the name. I'm not gonna say anything else. It's about still it. technically a secret. Yeah, it's still a secret. Yeah, because I mean, we're always working on music. Yeah, you yeah. know, they don't have to know the plans of every artist you know. Probably has like 20 projects happening at once. It's no yep. big deal. <laughs> yeah, and completely different projects. Yeah, I have three going at one time. I have a lo-fi <laughs> project. Yeah, I have a dubstep project, and I have a really depressing project. That's such a like emotional roller coaster. Yeah, or more emotional really ping pong. It's not a roller coaster. You're literally just ping yeah. pong back and forth. Well, the lo-fi, and this is another thing of why like music being important is like I'm not, since I'm a music producer as well as a writer, I'm not necessarily, um, always writing lyrics, right, to process things. So like this whole lo-fi, this lo-fi project we did, um. Started off because we want to have a 24 um, 7 like background study music YouTube thing going. Yeah. Um, hey, if anyone knows how to do that, please uh, reach out to us. Yeah. Um, I've tried and I've spent too many hours trying to figure this out. Um, but uh, we want that to go. That was where the inspiration came from. But when I started creating, they were just like unlocked all these emotions. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I can stay in this groove for a minute. And uh, I produced like six or eight tracks. Yeah. <laughs> in one night of just lo fi music that we were. Gonna... I came back and Nathan had like mad scientist hair and was like, guys, we're going to start a lo fi channel and play all my lo fi beats. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't slept. You hadn't slept. Yeah. <laughs> he came in at like nine in the morning, and I was sitting here at the computer doing it, like coding or something. Yeah, you were coding. And he's like, "What's wrong with you? <laughs> like, I haven't slept." <laughs> I'm like the Robinson lady. Yeah, I slept in eight days. <laughs> I haven't slept in eight. <laughs> oh it. my gosh, that unlocked a core um, memory. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a while. That's a great movie. It's a great movie. It is fantastic. Um, so. Yeah, obviously, music is extremely important. Important enough for, you know, all of us to sacrifice everything we ever have owned and open a studio. Yep. Um, you know, that that's pretty dang important. Um, so, with that uh, and the importance, um, we're going to jump over to the business side of things. <sighs> Unless you guys have more to say on the importance of, like, you've been really quiet. What's the the importance? It's important. <laughs> with the, with the crowd. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> it almost sounded like you said it's imported. It's imported. I mean that too. It could be. It could be. Sometimes it is. Yeah. Jonathan likes his K-pop. Bjork. 
it's not. Oh, she's K-pop. not K-pop. Yeah, but I was like, you were. I was not. like, Bjork is a K-pop artist. <laughs> wasn't she nominated for a Grammy this year? Yeah, she was. Yeah, I forget. It's pretty amazing. I forget who won. I don't think she won. I have no idea. It was album of the year, I think. I have no clue. I'm so behind on the Grammy stuff for last year. It's rigged anyways. It's fine. It's rigged anyways. <laughs> it's like the NFL and the hot. I'm just kidding. That's a whole other can of worms. That's a rabbit trail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, obviously, music is important to us, but the music industry does not exist without the evil necessities of the music business. Business. Love it. And um, what it means to music. Honestly, it sucks. <laughs> I was like, I hate it. <laughs> what do you mean you love it? <laughs> no, um, that is, I think that's one of the fun parts about the music industry mm. is most people think it is, you know, making music and releasing it. That's maybe 10%. If that. Mm, yeah, maybe 2%. As far as industry goes, I mean, obviously music is making music. Dude, me, the music industry is 2% milk. Two percent milk. Yep, it's two percent music. Ninety-eight percent water. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? Business. Yeah. So like, it's two percent milk. But two percent milk isn't just two percent milk. <laughs> but ninety-eight percent. business. I think you're thinking of skim milk. I don't know. I feel like that's the music industry. Skim being, milk. Yeah, skim. That's like literally like all water and no milk. But you have to have a little milk. That's, what percentage is it milk? I have no idea. <laughs> hey, Skim. <laughs> hey, Skim. Oh, Ben's going to look it up for us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Anyways, the point the point is still there. It's understandable. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's, it's a gallon of milk. Ben will let us know in a minute. <laughs> yeah. What? He's Googling right now. Um, What milk is music? <laughs> Oh wow! So it would be literally skim milk, ten yeah. percent music, ninety yeah. percent business. Wow, it's a horrible way to look at music. <laughs> music is skim milk. Ten <laughs> percent music, ninety percent business. Mm. Dang. And what is uh, s- skim backwards? Uh, m- m- mix. I'm scared. I'm going to say something really bad. <laughs> Mics. Mics. And what do we record music with? Mics. <laughs> milk is in charge of the music Mikes. industry. That's what we're finding out. There's no E. Music is milk. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What? Mix. Anyway. <laughs> music is milk. If there's one thing you get from this episode, it's music is milk. Music is milk. I mean, it's a good analogy. I'll, I'll remember it is, that for a yeah. while, probably. Music is skim milk. We should uh put that on the um Facebook page. We should. All right, we're gonna do it. <laughs> we're gonna do it. So um the business side of uh of music is fun. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> it's like it can be interesting. It can be. Yeah. Um and you know, like I said, we'll dive into this as we go throughout the season. Yeah. Um but there is there is so much um business that goes into music uh so much more than just recording and releasing a song so like protecting your music protecting your image protecting your brand uh, protecting your originality making yeah. sure you didn't accidentally steal someone else's originality i feel like this is also something like the business side of music is something that a lot of like average artists don't really think about they have an idea of what copyright is they have an idea of what royalties are they yeah. they have all these ideas and they probably make their own assumptions through those ideas but i feel like so like someone like you who's been through a lot of the industry deeper yeah. than most people have gone it's almost like i don't know it's it's almost like these tall tales of what the music industry actually looks like and what how it actually works yeah, I feel like it, people obviously have been uncovering it more and more as time has gone on. Yeah, things are more ex- accessible. Yeah, than even whenever I first started. Yeah, things were really exclusive. Yeah, when I first started, but now there's literally a website for everything. Yeah, I mean, even laws everything. have been laws have gone into effect over royalties at this point, and those keep changing like every five years. It seems like. 
Yeah, we should we should probably have a podcast about that. We um, should about the BMI. Yeah, lawsuit. Um, which is amazing. Yeah, that they you know they stand up and fight for songwriters. Because without songwriters, your favorite songs don't exist. Um, you should, just go Google it. Just go Google it. Go or, Google it. Or or just wait for us to come out with an episode about it. That too. Might be a minute, but you can wait. It's fine. Okay, let's jump. I'm I'm rabbit trailing. <laughs> All right. So balancing both. Um, this is just a fun discussion. Just kind of how um, how do we do it? Uh that's a tough one. That's a tough one. He gone. He gone. <laughs> he gone. <laughs> um. Honestly, it's kind of difficult. Yeah, I mean, with I feel <laughs> like with anything, it's hard to balance, like, two sections of your life or two yeah. sections of anything for that matter. But when it comes to, like, music and business, in my mind, f- at least my mind before knowing more about the industry, has them in two polar sections yeah. of thought. Like, music is more freeform, more creative. Business is more uh, standardized and structured. Very and structured. Solemn. <laughs> I just let my friends think about the business side. I just shun the business side. <laughs> As an artist, do not take that advice. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like that's that's the take though. Like a lot of artists choose though. <laughs> I don't think, yeah. That's no, the no, no, first no, thing no, you've listen. said on this podcast. It is the <laughs> worst advice you could possibly give somebody. No, but listen, like even even like with a normal artist, someone who just creates music. Because they want to create, I don't think it's the worst advice ever. I think it's, I think it's not. I wouldn't call it advice. I would say it's more of like a way to look at your music, way to like take a look at your music. What do you want out of it? Do you want it to be a hobby? Do you want it to be something you just enjoy doing, or do you want to make it a business? Like it's a very real thing to look at. I feel like, and that comes down to like how you balance it. Because not everyone wants to make money off of it. A lot of people just want to create. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just worry about the music side of things, and like, don't worry about the business side, and uh, just let your best friend handle it for you. <laughs> no, your, I'm your parents. Let them set up a <laughs> conservatorship. Oh gosh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I'm specifically talking about people who just want to write music because they enjoy it, yeah. versus people who want to make like a career out of it. Yeah. With that though, there's no balance. <laughs> in music or business though I guess with that. Yeah. I guess you can you can technically like without diving into the business side, like technically that comes down to what you define as business though, in a sense. Well anything that's gonna protect your music. Yeah, yeah. And get it out there. So like But like would you include socials in that? Yeah. Okay. What's the point in promoting your music if you're not making money yeah. off of it? That's true. I mean, is it recognition. I, I mean, know. you can you can you can pull the bull crap of like hopefully this will touch somebody. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Come on. You're not putting that out. You're either doing it for some form of clout, attention or money. I agree with that. Probably more attention like, more than anything. Yeah. I could see attention more than so money. So, if you're promoting it, you obviously care about it. Yeah. Right? So if you're putting it out there, some dude hears it, writes it down, yeah. records it, copyrights it, releases it. Yeah. Your stuff gets copywritten, like copyright stricken. Yeah. Are you just going to sit back and be like, oh, uh, cool. No. <laughs> you're going to be like, that's my song. Well, you should have you should have dove into the business side of things. and You should have yeah. protected your original content i've never once in my life heard somebody be like you know what i'm just doing this for fun and uh you know don't really care about the business side of things um and then something bad happens to them and then they're perfectly okay with it it's true but i've met many people who have said i'm not doing this for the money i'm just doing this for fun put it out there and it's stolen yeah and then they're like ticked off yeah because their music was stolen what's your fault yeah it's something that you own something that a part of you yeah so the business side is very important yeah um that and also i have met people and this is why i said this is the worst advice ever (laughs) this is why i said it 
because there's two people that I know of off the top of my head that I've met that have trusted their closest friends with the business side of things. But instead of giving the proper percentages, they were counting the business side of work as an extra X amount of percentages. And the artist was walking away with maybe 10 per- 10% of a song that they own 75% of. Oh, wow. So, and that's two people off the top of my head. Yeah. That I know that has happened to. And that's just close yeah. friends right. doing the hardest part of the music business. And which, I mean, I can't argue with them. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to get 25% of a song if I'm the engineer, producer, and the... Promoter. Yeah, and the promoter and the yeah. business side of things. That's not worth 25% to me. That's a headache. It's, it's a heck work. of a lot more than 25%. Yeah. So... I think anyway. that's why you have independent artists fighting so much to have like all of their music and all the yeah, money. yeah, because they're the ones doing everything. Yeah, they're it's like the ones creating their own image. Logic just released a his first independent album ever, so he's off of a label and wow. he just or I think it dropped Friday. It's either yeah last Friday or next Friday, whenever it dropped. Um, yeah, but it's his first his first album. And um, you know he's free to do the features that he wants. Yeah. No, that, but that's that's label talk, you know. Um, and he's got a manager that he pays to take care of the business side of things. And he's got a lawyer to protect in case the manager screws him over. Hmm. The whole depth. So of really, stuff. if you get one, if you get one, you got to get an, something else to. Yeah. You need a lawyer for it. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't need a manager. Um, unless you're, unless you're looking to like get involved in bigger things, but you do, if you're looking to get your music out there and in front of people for one and in front of crowds and in venues, you probably need a lawyer. Um, cause most venues are going to have contracts for you to look over. And as an artist, um, just stating the actual facts, artists have no idea what the legal side looks like now. Yeah. Most of them don't. What um what stage of someone's career do you think they should look into getting a manager? Um, if you're booking shows and you're really having trouble keeping track of um finances, your time management, and um, that's the two biggest things: time management and finances. If you're struggling with those two things, get a manager, like ASAP. Because if you're making money but you're not filing those for taxes, then you're gonna get eat up. By the Sam. The Sam. The Sam. <laughs> the Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uncle Sam. Um, so, yeah, if you're struggling with your time management because of music-related things and those things are creating income and that income you're struggling to manage, get a manager. Um, or if you're just simply – you don't know the alleyways to take to grow, it's also a good time to – Yeah. It could also be a good way to build <coughs> build connections. If they're connected deeply into a scene you want to yeah. be a part of, they could probably get you some opening acts with shows that you would grow in. Yeah, I would for for connections. Um, you can managers yeah, are yeah. great, but also a booking agent. Yeah. Um, because I mean, you can hire a booking agent and just be like, "Yo, I'm really just interested in your contacts." Um, and then you're gonna pay for their contacts. So yeah. go for it. So the balance of music and business is I feel like we were struggling to get to this point but now we're at this yes. point we are on it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um but the balance of both is extremely important. Yeah. Um sure, you can do things, you know, very minimalistic. Excuse me. But um you have to cut that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to leave it. Oh no. Um, you can you can do things very minimalistic, but do not expect to be, um, you know, an independent Chance the Rapper or independent Logic or independent A lister without covering your yourself. Like, there's no way. There's no way. You're either gonna get screwed over, or um, you're just gonna miss out on a heck of a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Well. Solid cast. That was good. Yeah. Good. I enjoyed it. Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah. How's the new layout feel so far? 
I like good. getting right into it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Because then I don't have to like fight to get out of the gaming headspace. That's true. So, all right, what you guys been listening to? Let's dive into that. <clears throat> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> what you been listening to, Kevin? Oh, why am I always first? This is not fair. I go first, like, every time. <laughs> Go and first. I don't have my phone, so I can't look it up. So you guys oh. have to go first. No. Okay. Okay. What, are you just going to think of it? Yeah. <coughs> it's going to take me a minute, but I'm going to get there. Okay. Uh, Ava Max released an album um, called Diamonds and Dance Floors. So far, that's one of the best mixed albums I've heard. It's incredible. Um, very, very well done. Uh, Lucas Graham released a song. It's very good. Amani White released a song, and it's very good. Um, all these are like pretty great. Uh, are like pretty great. Oh, duh! I wouldn't be <laughs> mentioning them if they weren't. Um, in my opinion, they're pretty great. Um, let's see. Uh, Metro Boomin released an album, and it was trash. <laughs> oh, oof! But if he it was a hit or miss, there were some good, some bad. If he doesn't trust you, I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> Well, he probably doesn't trust my opinion on this one. But some of the songs were good. Some of the songs were just... Um, there's one particularly that stood out. And he put The Weeknd and 21 Savage on the same song. And so you go from, like, freaking legendary vocals. Like, The Weeknd killed it. And then a terribly mixed... One of the worst mixes I've ever heard on an A-list rap song. What a hot take. It's terrible. I'll show you guys afterwards. Is this up there with like uh Drake's uh garbage he put out earlier? Um No, because I think Drake's stuff can grow on you. I think if you listen to it enough, it'll grow on you. Yeah. Whereas this one, you listen to the first half and you're hooked, but then you get the twenty one savages part and you're just like All right, All right bye. <laughs> bye. I'm done. But yeah, it's it's not good. Overall. Overall. <laughs> All right. I've been listening to The Cure. Nice. I'm digging into their uh, first album. It kind of surprised me. I've always heard the... Um, oh, I always forget the name. Is it the the Boys Boys Don't Cry? Is that what it's called? Oh, yeah. I've always heard that one, but, but I've never listened... Do. Huh? But Men Do. But Men Do, yeah. Um, I've always heard that album, the pink album with like the fridge or safe, whatever it is on it, but I've never like listened to the rest of it. You never listened to pornography? I have not listened. Well, yeah, I have with uh, you and Asher, yeah. That's weird. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even necessarily their best album. I just wanted to be shocked. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, listening to The Cure, just trying to get some more British elements in my life. Nice. More British is that elements. all you've been listening to? For the most part, at the moment, so yeah. like every piece of music you've heard since, yeah, I'm just, I'm just annoying you. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> what what you've been listening to? Um, some like Velvet Underground <coughs> and uh, Lou okay. Reed stuff, and uh, JJ Kale, and um, uh oh, the Faces, the Faces, um, and. The Strokes just released a new single, didn't they? Did they? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't heard it. I just thought I saw it. I haven't it. listened or heard it. And Trample by Turtles. Trample they by Turtles. Have a, I like Turtles. They, they have an album <laughs> that came out this past year that was produced by Jeff Tweedy. Oh, that's cool. He produces it's a really band good. called yeah. Turtles? Trample by Turtles. Trample by Turtles. I was hoping it was just a band called the Turtles. There's a record label called Yeah, the um It's just I like Turtles. Oh yeah, yeah. that's what it is. It's uh you said it was um <coughs> They're uh they're like a string Skrillex. band. Yeah. They're like a stri- Diplo. like a bluegrass string music. Oh, band. the Trample by but Turtles. They're like more Midwesty. Interesting. Okay. Like well, that. that's uh that's what we've been listening to. Hopefully, you know, you would uh like to get connected with us. Let us know what you have been listening to. Um hit us up on the studio page on Twitter. Just search uh Life and Diamonds on Twitter. Um we also have a Diamond Studios Instagram page and Facebook page. 
So hit us up on there. Like us, follow us, all that good jazz. And hey, if you enjoyed the show, give us a rating. We'd like to know what you think. And uh, if you enjoyed it, share it. And um, subscribe. Now, for the segment where um, Jonathan sings a random song. And we do our outro. Are you ready? This has been the podcast. Oh, 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 gosh. (laughs) Dang it. I got tricked. I Uh. I got tricked. Sing us a song. (laughs) Music is milk. Music tastes real good. Music makes me dance like I should. Like I should. Music is real great. Real great. Music destroys hate. Destroys hate. Music. 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 This has been the podcast. (laughs) This has been the podcast.